So we'll go to Chelsea, 15, 16 year old Bobby, at rise in the door at Chelsea Football Club. I'm presuming you had to move into digs. I um, did. Did you train every day? What did they change well, your diet? Yeah, like we uh, we left, and I was 15 and a half when I went to Chelsea. We were put in digs, um, and I was very, very, very lucky. I was put in digs with which had two other Chelsea youngsters there, and but we were all country boys. Yeah. So we had this. And we had an awful lot of stick to take, you know, from the um, townies. Townies, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, and they were all called Cockneys mainly. Yeah. And um, they're, they're so funny. The Cockneys are yeah, so funny. They, they, yeah. I don't they're, know where they quick. get the, the image that they're miserable. You know, yeah. like they're such a funny crowd of people. And um, we, we used to go, uh, what the situation was, we, it wasn't called the Academy or anything. Um, really attractive like that it was called the ground staff which you'd think he was a building fellow on the building ground yeah. staff um, but um, you had three three weeks training and then one week you'd work either as a you know like on the ground staff yeah. or in the uh, dressing room yeah and um you know, like, uh, it gave us a chance, when we were in the dressing room, it gave us a chance to rub shoulders with the real stars of the club, you know. Yeah. And um, they were no different to what we grew up into. You know, like, if you know yeah, what I mean. They, the they, apprenticeship, they, like. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, the friendship, and you, they'd give you a bit of stick about the boots not being clean yeah, and so course, forth. Yeah, 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 and if you got, got cheeky, got as well. if you got cheeky, which you did, yeah. you know, you got thrown in the um, bath, you know, fully clothed in your, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, like your sports clothes. And, um, it, you know, but it, it brought that difference between the first team and to the juniors. Yeah. You know, mm. so much closer. And then when, when you, you know, like, if you've got a chance to play in the first team, yeah, you know, like, you, they'd still be taking a knock on you like you know, yeah, like, yeah, you know yeah. they have a laugh it, it didn't seem such a drastic jump yeah. but um, as I said before eight of us um, we won the youth cup the very first time for the coach of the youth team and he'd been there a few years and his dream was to win the youth cup for Chelsea and um, we, they had just uh, just above us they had a team, very good team, and Jimmy Greaves was the mainstay of it. And um, they got to the final, and they won uh, 5-1 at home. And they, the two lads I was in digs with, they were both in the team, oh, and yeah. one was the keeper. And uh, I said, oh, you've only got to turn up, you know, like Wednesday. So they said, well, yeah, I suppose so. Well, they were playing Wolves who were very good in the yeah, 50s. Yeah, they were a very good side. Yeah, that very time, good yeah. side in the 50s. And uh, didn't they go down, uh, well, up to Wolves and get beat 6-1? Jeez. And, you know, so they were really gutted. You know, can you can so, imagine yeah. thinking yeah. that we've only got a goal like you. Yeah. And we came along two years later, and, you know, like, because we'd been together so long, Yeah. and, you know, like, we had a great mix of, players and we won it yeah we won the final we beat Preston um, we drew with Preston at home and, and beat them 4-1 away and I was fortunate enough to um, get three you know because I was you know back in the centre forward spot did you get the ball after the game <laughs> I don't think I'm worried about the ball <laughs> no we were so happy for the yeah. manager and you know like I said thanks Dick for all you've done for me, and and he said, this showed you listen sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like he was yeah. always sharp, you know, like, you know? but um, it, uh, yeah, like it was a great feat because they hadn't, you know, been near it other than that time that they got yeah. beat. And now they win it nearly every every season, like you know. Yeah. So it, when you're doing that, it's not sort of such a great uh, your, deal, yeah, like your you know? team set the expectation, yeah. but. So, um, so, like when Chelsea bought you in that age, and they they had you like, did they have any expectancy? Because I 
was listening to an interview with Bobby Charlton, and he said that United had an expectancy to play good football in front of their um, yeah. fans because it, Old Trafford was on an industrial estate and all the workers used to work during the week, Monday to Friday, yeah. and then Saturday they demanded, yeah. not only expected, they demanded yeah. a yeah. good game of football. And yeah. I imagine yeah. they'd be outside with pitchforks yeah. <laughs> if yeah. you didn't. Yeah. So was there was there anything like that at Chelsea at the time? Like were you no, told we, we, we play a certain way? Or? We, we sort of... Um, you know, like Dickie Foss took the youth team till they finished 18, and then they'd go into, you know, like uh, the main part of the side of uh, the club, and you'd either play in the third team, the reserves, or you know, be good enough yeah. to play in the first team. And so you had to climb those, you know, like ladder. Yeah. You know, to, you know, sort of to earn your spot in the first team. Um, some of us got very, very lucky. Um, you know, like, because we we done a jump. You know, you know, like some people say, oh, I was very very letters. lucky. I'd yeah. agree with them. Um, you know, because uh, one week there was four left wingers in front of me, and they were all either down injured yeah. or down sick. And that wasn't the week you, was it? the week before <laughs> we'd played in on a, where we juniors played in those days, and we'd beaten some side eight. 8 1, and I'd got five. And, um, you know, like it was in front of 12 people. And the Tuesday, the next week, where they always used to have a practice match, and the manager came over and he was a nice guy, a really gen real gentleman. And he said, um, I'm going to put you in the first team squad. Yeah. I, I looked around to see who he's talking to, like, you know. <laughs> Because, yeah, you know, I thought he's joking. Yeah. And, and he, wanted, he was dead serious, like, you know, he was a serious type of guy. And he said, you and Barry, well, Barry was the other lad in the digs, centre forward. He said, so uh, prepare yourself. He said, you'll come training, you know, here at the bridge with the, you know, the lads. Oh, we got so much stick off the lads. Yeah. You know, like, you know, sort of, oh, God, we must be paying him thousands to get in the team and all this, like, you know, all the crack. But um, when it came, you know, people said, well, you're nervous. And, you know, like all the time you were training and, you know, like with the lads, you, you, it didn't sort of hit you. But when, it, when we had a team talk on the Saturday just before the kickoff, that hit us. You know, like, you know, they started telling the players what he wanted from them. Yeah. And I'm sitting there and I think, oh, I can't do any of that. You know, and yeah. when I come out, I was shaking like you know, and, and one of the with Skipper lived down the road from us. Yeah. And uh, he pulled me aside. He said, uh, "Nervous?" I yeah. said, "Not half." He said, "Wait, wait until we go down the dressing room. I'll show you something." So sure enough, we're in the dressing room, all dressed, you know, like there for the game and geared up. And he said, "Go in the room next door, which was the toilets." He said, "And see if you see anything strange." So I went next door like. And he said, I said, out of the first cubicle, there was smoke pouring out, like, yeah. So I went back, I said, Peter, I said, someone's in there smoking. He said, do you know who it is? I said, I ain't got a clue. And I'm looking around to see who was missing. And he said, it's a goalkeeper. He's an England goalkeeper. He said, and that's how nerves hit you. He yeah. said, he's in there every match smoking, Chopin. you know, like, yeah, you know, yeah. putting himself under that pressure. So I said, well, everyone nervous? He said, yeah, it's good, yeah. yeah. So we went out there, and from playing in front of 12 people the week before, we were in front of 45,000, you know? And that's even more than Chelsea getting old. Yeah. You know, like, because of the, they had terracing in our day. Yeah. And um, it, uh, it turned out to be a super day for us. You couldn't, you know, like, it's something that you dream about. This, this is a dream coming true. Yeah. Um, we both scored and we won the game 3-2 Jimmy Green scored the winner for us Brilliant. you know and um, you know like y y you couldn't just believe it like yeah. you, know, we, you know sort of all the cliche comes out and um, we were in the dressing room afterwards and then that's where we really got a bit of stick and uh, in those days the bonus was a huge four pound Four pound bonus, yeah, yeah, sir. <laughs> and they said, "What are you going to do with your bonus this week?" 
you must have really like, wanted it. Uh, <laughs> you, you must have really wanted it anyway. If it was four pound because you scored two hundred and two, <laughs> multiply that by four, <laughs> sort of quids in. Uh, but um, no, it, it this shows you how um, yeah we we'd have been the the, the there was a curtain, you know how much they could be played pros. So all the pros were getting paid twenty pound across the board, and then they um, they threatened the strike, yeah. and um, that broke the back of that, and they lifted the. Um, yeah. And, like you, and they said, Look, you pay them what you think they're worth. Well, to be fair, the, the players nowadays they should hold a special day for the guy who started that strike <laughs> because, <laughs> because yeah. uh, he's well, after I doing think, a, I think a serious favour. The clubs would die yeah. an assassin, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was, um, I think it was from Belgium, and um, you know, like it, I think it went to court and they said that they, they you couldn't do it, restrain them. And um, of course, then you know it hit the headlines. You know the first hundred pound player and yeah. so forth. You know, and, it's unbelievable. Um, yeah. But um, not being jealous or anything like that. But I think it's gone too far the other way. Yeah. No, it has. I, I actually heard an interview you did, and you said like that. Um, played for the the love of the game back then. Yeah. They, yeah. A lot of players are playing for the money now. Um, then again, you, I don't know. It's hard to say to to, to judge really. I yeah. suppose kind of it's different eras, it's different times, yeah. but the money has a huge influence. Like, well, I bet if you went round Cork or went round Ireland and asked all the lads who were playing League of Ireland, they wouldn't be worried about what money they were earning. They just want to play. Yeah. You know, like they want to play for you know where they you know come from or you know a team that they've trained with, and you know. Uh, you know that's exactly as we were, yeah. yeah. And that's one question that um, is very difficult to answer on. What, yeah. uh, on when we're you know going around doing hospitality, people say, oh, "I bet you're jealous of the players." No, and you know, like it's hard to say no. And yeah. you know, like it's well, obviously, even being a, a footballer myself, I wouldn't have earned. The, the top money I wouldn't have played in the top leagues so we kind of just aren't look you aren't a good enough living but yeah. um yeah there it's it's not being it's not being jealous obviously it's but you would you would like to have it you're 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 yeah. only human but does does money bring you happiness at the end of the day yeah. I, 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 no. I I don't think so no I, don't. I think um I think your your memories and and your legendary status like, you can't buy that like no so for me anyway so. well I think I think you know like it's all the fun that you you get out of it. See, you know, I say something you know, that most supporters find strange to understand. I say, look, when we played, it was a two-way street. I said, we played to give you pleasure, and you paid to give us pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> I said, and that's it. I said, yeah. that's how it worked. I said, because without the supporters, we wouldn't have been pro professional footballers. Yeah. You know, it was the fans... Yeah, that kept the the mm. game alive. I wouldn't say just in England. I'd say everywhere. You know. Yeah. Well, that's but what it's down to nowadays. Is the fans paying the money? You know, yeah. buying the jerseys, yeah. buying, buying the merchandise. It. That's where the money is coming from. Yeah. You, you, well, you've got your big TV money as well. Yeah. That's, that's, well, that's, that's huge. That's and the, you know, basically, that's what you're hitting at. Is that you know the television money and yeah. all the other things, the advertising. See, there was no advertising in that day. No. You know, and no, I, mean, uh, I, I, I watched researching for this. Actually, I was watching a couple of things on YouTube, and there was there was a clip. Most of the stuff was in black and white, so you couldn't see it anyway. <laughs> but it was like uh, the commentator said at the start of the game, "Oh, that's Chelsea in the darker dr <laughs> black jersey." You know, it's like <laughs> well, that, was, <laughs> but, that uh, was how it was. And when, yeah. you, and when you played on television, you and you sort of played. Say you were sort of uh, one team playing in blue and one in red. Uh, which is quite opposite, but then they had both white shorts, and yeah. dark, uh, you couldn't tell who the, who no, was who. No, you know, just and, tell um, it, the, you'd the have to change. Yeah. You, yeah. you know, because it wasn't a clash; it's yeah. just a clash for the television to sort yeah. out, like you know, and they couldn't do it. One one clip I watched actually was uh, when you played Trammer away in the FA Cup, and the pitch was just white with snow. 
Yeah. And <laughs> I, I actually, I, yeah, I, did, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah. No, like, that that was back in '63. Yeah. And when when England had much like what Ireland had. Yeah. You know, ten days ten ago. Ten days ago, yeah. And um, and you played. Yeah, you know, like the pitches, they didn't know what to do with pitches. There was no under. Yeah, ground uh, heating, heating yeah, or anything yeah. like that and everybody tried to um, get get rid of the snow yeah. but in, in a lot of cases it caused problems because it left ice you know like where they yeah. working on it slipping like yeah pushed down into ice and um, you were right we drew there at train yeah, there, too on, and yeah. we took them um, back to Chelsea and it was so bad when we ran out in the evening you, you, when we walked out, you know, you had to look at the pitch, see what yeah. it's like, and you sort of said, "All right, take a short stud." Yeah. So we all changed our boots and put the short studs in, and at half time, you know, you walked out and you got a grip. At half time, when we come out back on the pitch, you could hear the studs going through the ice, Jeez, crack, yeah, crack, yeah, crack, yeah. like you're, yeah. And um, you know, like it just changed the game completely. But um, I thought. You know, people ask me what do I think about the game today and, you know, like in our day. And we all, all the old ones get hit with this, oh, it's a lot faster today than it was in your day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And we argue or dis discuss the point that it took us in our day about three passes to get from one penalty box to the, the other yeah. end penalty yeah. box. Now it takes them about 20 or 25 yeah. you know, passes. So how can they be faster? You know, yeah, just... I don't know how you think about it, though. No? Well, long, long ball, I suppose, was one anyway. It, yeah. it, it, was, it, was, it, was a, it was a lot of get, get down the channels. In, in, yeah. For me, just watching those games, it was, it was the, the right back was getting you down the channels. But yeah. even you yourself, you actually scored one, uh, well, probably a lot more goals with just the clips I saw. You were in that channel, and you were able yeah. you were able to manipulate the, your 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 body position around players and yeah. get in the box. You were quite um, low sense of gravity to the yeah. ground, so those players yeah. have that. I suppose no nowadays, it they actually want to have 50, 60 passes before oh, yeah. they score a goal. Oh, so yeah. it's like different yeah. philosophies and different ways of playing. Yeah, I I just think you know being old fashioned, you know, like we used to hit them quick. Yeah. And you know, like you know, here and now, yeah. you know, teams hitting them on the break and so forth. But we were, we were quite speedy. We were young. Yeah. Most of us were only 21, 22. Yeah. So we were a young side, and we got often accused that we were too fast. You know, like too, yeah. going too fast to think that the same speed. Yeah. And that's if we're being hit by criticism. But um, we used to catch a lot of sides on the bounce, like yeah. you know that. And um, so, if you were, you know, like playing up front, and you you wanted the ball as quickly as possible to get get yeah. in behind them. And yeah. nowadays, the player, you know, when they play it across, you yeah. know, sideways, you know, like you think, well, the, the yeah. runner would go mad. I un yeah. I understand where you're coming from because a lot a lot of games, no, they're not great to watch because, as you said. They'll hold that. They'll hold that ball up, and it gives the other team a chance to get get in and defend. And there isn't as many crosses yeah. as there was in your yeah. your day, or you know, end to end football. Uh, again, in England does have that kind of style, end to end. And um, most of the games is like attack and attack and attack, and yeah. which doesn't help them kind of in Europe no. because European teams. Once you give the ball end away, end, it takes give, a, yeah, yeah, they like won't, they five, won't give, it back. Yeah. give it back. Yeah, that, that's what the, their worry is, but. Um, if you as you go down the league, you'll find that, that um, you know, like Div Two now, you know, like they they're probably better to watch, you know, like for excitement. We, yeah. we had a manager at Crystal Palace when I went there, and um, he was really old-fashioned, but he had, you know, like in his sayings, he had some good ideas and good thoughts which were true. Yeah. He's, he'd come out and he'd say. You know, if we were pushing the ball about and not going anywhere, we'd be in training next week. And he said, listen, the people who come in and pay for your yeah. wages, he said, they want to be going, oh, ah, like, you know, yeah, with yeah, shots yeah, yeah, and yeah. crosses and yeah. so forth. He said, and you're not 
causing them to do that. Yeah. And they get bored. Yeah. And, you know, that, now that was back in, you know, like in the 70s. Yeah. So you can imagine how much it's gone on since yeah. then. And, you know, like, well, I always think when I'm listening to people, um, broadcasters and, you know, the, the specialists who, you know, yeah. give their opinion, you know, and they, a lot of them sort of say, oh, you know, that's not the right way to play football. I don't believe there's one way to play football. No. You play to what you what you've got strength in and yeah. and if that means right you knock it forward you get forward and you get it backed up behind. Yeah. There, there, you know there's no, no you know, wrong nothing wrong with it. Okay, they get the ball forward. Uh, you know like a lot of the center halves can't defend. Yeah. You know, a lot of the defenders can't defend like, you know. And, you know, they're so far, you know, pushed up, um, you know, looking to get a yeah. pass in, or they're brought forward with the passes. Um, so, you know, like, you know, I'm not, you know, okay, you know, there are so many different ways to, to play it. And if you look down through history, you'll see that, you know. Yeah. Now, one thing that, that, that's a bugbear, well, it was a bugbear for me, because yeah. I was probably the worst at it. Yeah. It was... Two-footedness, yeah, being yeah. two-footed. Now yeah. you you get a lot of people. Now I'm going to say two-footedness is obviously better to be two-footed than one foot. You know, if yeah. you can use both feet equally as well, then it gives you more um, to you know what you're doing. But <laughs> you got can have really good one-footed players. You know, yeah. and people say no, they can't be good. And I say well. You know, like again, taking them back. If they're only youngsters or you know, like younger yeah. than myself, they won't remember this team or guy. But there was a guy who played for Hungary, Puskas, Puskas, yeah, left footer. Yeah, he absolutely ripped people apart, like yeah, you know, yeah. with his one foot. And um, and I think it just shows you that you know, like the the you can do it. Yeah, you know, okay, the players. Perhaps the defenders have got more um, cleverer, you know, and, yeah. and can force them, you know, like, and they, they play as a team now. Yeah. Much of it was, if you was right back and I was left wing, it was it was a battle between us two, yeah. who had the best game like, you know. Yeah. That would be the... It was kind of one v yeah, one Yeah, one on yeah. ones. I, I, can see, I can see what you're saying, though, about the pundits, I mean, and, and game analysis and... I s I suppose you watch a game, they get the screen on the wall and they draw the circles and X's and they say he should have been here and he's... But like, as you said, the fans' point of view then, I mean, they don't want every game to be nil all. So, no, like, you no, know, that's no. that's the kind of beautiful thing about football is goals and conceding. Yeah. But then you get on the other side of it then and I can understand coaches setting up to defend like that because if they lose the game... Their job is gone. Yeah. Their income is yeah, gone, oh, and yeah. the income is a big thing. They're probably getting used to one yeah. life, yeah. or they might have one chance yeah. as well at a club, and they've got to prove themselves. So, I I can understand. I I I would love to be like you know. I'd love to watch football every week. That they just take chances and they they yeah. go for goals and yeah. and and not worry about the defending side yeah. of things. If goals go in, they just but again, it's people's careers and people's livings, and that's yeah. that's kind of what it is really. Well, Same, I I think. Um, the Italians in our era were very good defenders. They um, they uh, they made made their game around defending, you know. Yeah. And um, you know they were very difficult to play against. That was their art, yeah. Yeah. And um, you know they they used to pick you off. They were what they were really brilliant at the other end of the other end of the field was that they were great at one you know short one twos you know yeah. around the box and that's what you know like that's where they scored a lot of their goals was from you know they didn't have runners you know yeah you know like if you was a runner even in our day towards the end of our careers um if you was a runner you were sort of uh, people looked down on you like right. they, they sort of thought well, you can't play with the ball but yeah you know you know like uh, uh, best part of us was being able to get in behind people and yeah. once we done that we made it pay like you know? yeah and uh, there's nothing wrong you know like you've got to have a bit of everything i think you Don't have you? to yeah you have to 
And what would your advice be to young players now looking to get into like professional football? And, and don't get disappointed from where you are first and foremost. Yeah. You know, like you can be living out in you know a small village, but you know if, you, if you've got the love, you know that's where it all starts with you know the, the love and the, the dream to you know want to be someone yeah and I was I, I don't mean this in any nasty term at all you um, we we played a friendly with our squad when they were um, 16 17 and we went down um, West Cork and uh, we played a side and everybody said these these all play GA yeah. And um, we thought, well, this could be an interesting game. But what an interesting game it was. They actually you know, took us apart, like, you know. Yeah. And they were all good footballers. Yeah. And I thought, God, it just shows you, like, you know, that you know, people can adapt to both yeah. sides, like, you know. And um, they really um, could play. Yeah. And, of course, now with the television, it helps all the youngsters to see all the good points. But I don't know if you follow this sort. Youngsters will pick up bad habits before they pick up good habits. Oh, they definitely do, 100%. Yeah. And I suppose it's a mixture of all of the cultures across the world now coming together, trying yeah. to make that one perfect game yeah. of football, which it's hard to do. And as you said, the youngsters, they're on social media and they're seeing stuff on like um, uh, social media sites and they're seeing the bad... Not the so much bad stuff, but they're taking up the bad points. Yeah. So they'll see Ronaldinho doing a nutmeg, yeah. and they think if you do a nutmeg, then your job is <coughs> done. So like you've yeah. you've made it, yeah. you know. So <laughs> that's, that's kind of my my opinion. Well, I'm going to ask you a question, yeah. right? Uh, as a defender, what do you think about the defending in the you know the last you know ten years? Has oh, it got better or? Well, as you say, as individuals, as no. as individuals, I I think at the higher level, no, I don't think it has got better in 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 the Premiership. With the, the ugh, you're you're looking at you're looking at lads, and it's like they don't know what to do. It's the, it's yeah. they're 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 looking to their coaches. I, I agree with you. Yeah. Right. Tell me now. Yeah. How many tackles did you make with that? How many times None. <laughs> None. Yeah, I yeah. Bet you didn't yeah. know how to, you know, like your hands was balanced. Yeah. But I, I've never seen so many um, free kicks or offences with the hands yeah. as there is now in the game. It's almost as though it's um, almost like part yeah. rugby or yeah. part yeah. GA. Yeah, football. I know what you're saying. You know, they're like, all kind of you know, using their body weight, yeah. And they're quite open with it, you know, yeah. Like when they and they shove them in the back and they shove them from here to the wall there, yeah. And and then when the the referee blows it, they go, God, what did I do, ref? Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, I just can't understand that at all. No, it's but again, I suppose different times. I mean, just w- watching that those couple of clips there. Um, actually, that so was it Chelsea was it Chelsea Trammer? Yeah. So played like. A sweeper system so there was there was a back four and then there was one guy in behind yeah, yeah. so that's that's kind of ultra defensive if you did that nowadays do yeah. you'd be thinking that it's ultra defensive because everyone else yeah. be dropping off yeah. but the the thing is the tackles as well i mean there was some tackles flying in those games yeah. i mean lads lads were like nailing each other and it's, well, it's great i i found it great to watch because <laughs> we used to play like that when we were uh, younger but it's kind of it's going out of the game if you take the risk of going to nail a fella now inside uh, a european championship game you're risking one getting sent off and the rest yeah. of the lads having to put in a shift yeah. for you yeah and like two a bad injury you know even to yourself yeah so but don't get me wrong, I, yeah. I believe in tackling. I mean, boy, yeah. they could tackle in the 60s. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. I mean, we had Chopper Harris behind, behind us, yeah. like, you know, and Chopper didn't miss much, yeah. you know. And he wasn't dirty, he was just hard. Yeah. You know, like, he, you know, like I'd never seen him do someone over the top or anything no, like that. No. But yeah. when he hit them, he really hit them. Yeah. And, and, and they, I think they took it as well, yeah. because there was one stage, a guy tackle the fellow outside the box. Now there was there was kind of a bit of a scuffle 
and I think he he, pun- he punched him. He definitely punched him into the the, the ribs, side of the ribs. Yeah. There wasn't a yellow card. There was like got up. The referee made him both shake hands <laughs> after, yeah. and on they got with it. Well, it was. But you know, surely yeah. that surely that's what um, if fans you, understand. Yeah. I don't yeah. say with the like or dislike, but they understand it's a man's game. Yeah. Now we had a um, a guy, a coach, and he was a good coach. He was at West Ham. And he came out in the 70s and said that football would become a, a non-contact sport. Yeah. And and we all sort of laughed, really, you know, like, because, I mean, it was certainly, you know, not that when we played. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, like, the saying was, don't let them know that they've hurt you. you yeah. Know, which was, you know, fairly obvious. And I regret hearing that saying one day when we were playing um, Norwich. And this fellow that was picking me up was giving me a, a few clumps like you know yeah and he knocked me to the floor and i was on my knees and i was getting up and i said is that the best you can do and he, he drew his arm back and went how about that and a big split lip like i thought yeah, yeah. don't open your mouth yeah. again <laughs> don't do it again yeah that's <laughs> but um you know like it you know like it is a man's game it is it it, it was maybe yeah, I, I, I think football is in personally. I think it's in for a bad uh, future. If yeah. Yeah, it's like, as you said, it was, it was a man's game before. Now it's 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 kind of it look. It, there is prima donnas in the game at, at the moment, and there's guys ending up at top clubs who fellas will give their right arm to be there. Yeah, and they're not putting in a performance, not only for the team but for the fans watching, yeah. and that guy. Who's at a top club might be on a hundred k a week, okay? If he doesn't put in a shift for a year, he will get another 80, 90 or even yeah. more yeah. off another club that will take a yeah. chance off him. Yeah. So where do we kind of balance it out? I mean, could we do yeah. a contract saying that, like, you know, if he's not putting in a performance yeah. after a month and we're not happy with him yeah. as fans? Well, I don't think it's even, door, like, it, you know, like it's gone sensible, like you know. Um, people sort of say, you know, like, did you have an agent? I said, yeah, he used to get me um, uh, a film session with uh, Burl Cream or something like that. You yeah, know, yeah, you'd have yeah, your photo yeah. done and you got your £50, like, you know, and that was the agent's business done for. But, uh, you know, I mean, no. I mean, the agents are cleaning up, aren't they? You know, yeah, like, they yeah. I mean, I've got you and and you, you're sort of playing well and, and the club's going to transfer you and say... Man, Man United come in with you, and, you know, and say, oh, 75 million. And you say, God, that's good. You're know, like, yeah. And I turn around and say to Man, Man City, if you offer 90 million, it come to you. And, and that's what happens. Yeah. I mean, how many times do you see teams got a fellow all set up, and yeah. all of a sudden it's changed? Yeah. He's Boston gone somewhere Reds, else. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think that's that's what's been happening. Yeah. Now in our day, you weren't supposed to talk to to a player if he was at another club. Yeah. Uh, you know, like the club buying him weren't allowed to approach him, like you know, touch him yeah. up, like you know, in the sense of, you know, and it, I mean, it was uh, all done through uh, internationals. You know, like if if we were playing in the say under twenty three together, and we, you know, and our club wanted you. I'd say, look, have a chat with him. And, yeah, and that's it. Tell him what a great yeah, club yeah, yeah. we are, and, yeah. you know, and, and tell him, yeah. you know, we'll meet up and have a chat. And that's how, it, you know, like it was conducted. No, it was against the rules, really. Yeah. But um, at least it was player and club meeting. You yeah. Know, not the agents, you know, doing their bit. Yeah. Because clubs have got agents as well. Yeah. And, um, but look, it's a big money business, and no, it is not. don't kind of know enough about it to indulge into it. I'm just no. kind of giving my opinion on what I'm seeing out in the pitch, really, or just as a as a football fan myself, or you know. But um, was was it was it always fun for you playing football? I mean, you talked about playing as a kid in school. Yeah, it was it was yeah. fun. Same for me. Then you yeah. kind of go into a bit more professional kind of setup, yeah. and then it's kind of still fun at the youths. But then once you go into the first team, the, the no, it, it don't kinda, change. It doesn't don't change. Yeah, it you know, change like it, it, yeah. it's sort of uh, there's never a day you wake up and think, oh, I've got to go to work like you. Know? Yeah. Um, you know, like you, you're going in, going in, enjoying. You, you're doing something that you you enjoyed. Yeah. Okay. Perhaps you know a lot of people say, oh, I didn't used to enjoy running a 
a cross country or something like that, which yeah. we done. And uh, yeah, like, but you just, you just you, get over it. You, then, you, yeah. Well, you made a, a fun of that, you know. Yeah. Like, but I beat you this day, Catty. Yeah. You know, like Catty yeah, was yeah, Peter yeah. Bonetti, who was our goalkeeper, and he used to beat most of us home. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and we used to take stick from the manager for that. Like, yeah. and say, how can the goalkeeper who don't do any running? Beat all of you lot. Yeah. I would say he's trying and we're not. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Yeah. It, but there was there was a good good humour like you know, about the, yeah. the job.